Hi everyone, Shirley Peters here. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to paint uh, an old bridge from Prague and uh, it's, I'm pretty sure it's the Charles Bridge, but um, I, might, I might have to look that up. <laughs> I'll mention it below. Either way, um, it'll be in the notes where you can go to download this photograph and if you want to have a printed version to paint from, you could always just blow it up, do a screen grab like now. That. Oh, grab that and you blow it up. That 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 helps. Uh, the um, I've the beginning of this video I've stolen from a, an artist called uh, Anders uh, Anders Anderson, and uh, he's from uh, I think he's uh, Norwegian, Danish, somewhere like that, Scandinavian. And uh, he's, he, he's made a couple of videos, only a few. It's a shame because they are absolutely fantastic. I'll put a link to uh, the two particular ones I love of his. Um, <clears throat> and um, one of the ones he does, he starts with the, the paper in a bathtub and pulls it out in the shower, I think shower recess. Anyway, um, I've copied his style, so I thought I'd better give him a, a credit, but it might be worth got, worthwhile, you chaps, you watercolour people looking at his video because his watercolours are just uh, so, they're second to none. They're so free, so fresh. And it was done quite a while ago, the, uh, the video. Anyway, so just shout out to him and uh, thanks for watching and I'll turn the camera now and get started. Nice beautiful watercolour brush here. I'm going to do a, a darkish sky even though it's not in the photograph. Oh, okay, here we go. Hang around with different shades of blue to get a nice deep, dark, broody sky. Water. And then I'll match that in the water underneath. Okay, just letting that run down the page nicely. Oh, I just bought some beautiful new um, brushes. Look at these. A uh, special treat for myself. Oh, I'm not sponsored, of course, but um, I'll put a link below. Come in a beautiful box. Yeah, couldn't wait to use them. So, I'll use them on this video. This is what I wanted. This lovely size 24. But I wanted to do this because of the uh, um, the building there being hard um, edged. I wanted to get the flat in, but at this stage I won't be able to do that because it just occurred to me that uh, this paper is going to be too wet now. That was a good idea at the time to start with a, a bath for the paper. But what I'll do is the very background, I'll leave it to some of the trees at the side. I'll get some very pale neutral colours, a little bit of burnt umber and a bit of blue. Give it that original. I'm just going to run that behind to make it look like the buildings at the back. I've not used this brush before, so it's a Bit of a learning curve. Some of the some of these buildings look like oops, a lump there. Some of the buildings look like they will be um, warm coloured and some not so warm. Might put a little bit of purple on this side. Oops. <laughs> it's a trouble when the paints are brand new. They form a skin on the top because they start drying from the top down. So I know they're wet underneath. Hard to get them out, hard to get it out. So I can run that right across them. Didn't get much purple into that shot, did I? Okay. 
few little details there. Now I'm going to be putting a beautiful big bridge going right across here. There, yeah, in a minute. Um, in a way, I'm getting familiar with how wet this paper is by fiddling around with things like foliage and foreground items. I'm going to get the my hair dryer out now and I will dry this off so that I can play with that bridge. Yeah, well, can't help adding a little bit of texture into this water. Okay, hair dryer. I actually don't want it too dry. I want to keep a little bit of the moisture because I do want the building to blend. Now I'm going to use this beautiful colour that will be um, ultramarine. No, God, I've got that on my brain. Now that I think about it, I will add some ultramarine in. So it's basically a um, neutral brown. Oh, burnt umber, ultramarine. And that little one there that I was whinging about before has a cinnamon colour to it. But I do need that pinky look in this particular. So the the drawing, I'm not drawing it in obviously, I'm just going to be um, winging it. But the, the main bridge, the main upright of the bridge is um, not in the photograph, well the, the spire is out of the photograph so I'm just going to be bringing it up like that. Bring that down. Bacon thing there, didn't I? This side I'll add a touch of warmth in that combination. Down. Yep. Okay, let's go for a straight across line, basically like that. Go for a couple of archways. And if I keep it loose, if I make a mistake, it won't matter. I'll just give it a title of, say, German Expressionism or fun part of this bridge are the little statues on top. They really are a bit of a, a folly. Oh, those are a bit faded out. But I know they're there. The day I visited Prague there was a demonstration on this bridge and a whole pile of women had linked arms right across. I didn't know, I hadn't, because I didn't know the language I didn't know what they were, uh, what their signs were in. Okay. In the water below, we put that in pretty quickly as well. I'll cool that. I'll cool. This, I'll use the same color I used the top, but I'll cool it off with some blue, and then. Um, but uh, basically, come straight down like that. So I'll go really dark, as dark as I can get if it's without being black, of course. I don't want to go to black at this stage. Zigzag that a little bit. I'll darken that up there. And this can go up the top. Good colour for underneath. So, which this time the water is going in that direction, so I'll start 
pulling it sideways. Hmm. The buildings behind have virtually disappeared. <laughs> That's all right. I'll lighten up my colours here and pull them down that way. Dramatic lines. I'll keep to the dark on this bridge coming down. And get back into the see why I wanted it still to be wet, the the um, paper so that this would all blend in. Room in yellow there. I will I'll start with it up the top and then I'll put it down the bottom and across. Into the purpley blacks. Start putting a bit of detail on that bank. Now water wise go right dark there really dark put the lamp black across the base there to make it look like it's not going anywhere I'm just fiddling this is one of those times where I might say don't do what I do <laughs> I've just rinsed off the brush. I'm not sure about the brush. I like it, I think. I like the shape of it, but I'm not sure about whether I'm happy with uh, the bending of that. It's, being, it's not quite as stiff as I'd like. It's, been, it's behaving like a usual watercolour brush does. So. Not too bad. This is all brickwork in here. I won't be putting that in, I'll just be lightening it up with a scrub out. Scrub out on that side. Across the top. Light. We won't touch that side at this stage. The buildings behind. Oh, there's a oh, very flexible brush. You can twist it sideways. Not quite sure what to do with those. There's a blue. No, oh, actually, it's a turquoisey blue um, spire. Gosh. Wish me luck with this one. I might put it up like that. Actually, I've got to go to another brush. I don't have enough control on it at the moment for doing creative shapes. Trying to make a point. You can really, you can blame your brush if you want. You really can not happy. You're not getting what you want. <laughs> Oops. There's some very colourful buildings back there. And I'm just going to touch a little bit in. To tell you the truth, if I'm too, if I'm too honest about it, they're too colourful. So I'll just make a little hat. This is Prague, so it's got lots of lovely, pretty buildings. I just want a hint of them behind this one here. I'll see how low I can get this tone, as in pale, but I need some brown in it. Okay. 
I'll dull these off as well, especially on the shadow side. Whoops, but it's all right, it's got some vertical little doodads. Just a few spots here and there. Of course, that comes right down to the floor to the um, sea. Uh, yeah, sea level that you can see through there. Prague's on the sea, I think. By the time we got to Prague, we had been all the way down from Paris down to Budapest. I was a bit tired. I wasn't really concentrating. But we did a lovely cruise and we got these beautiful photographs, which is so valuable. I'm going to add some blue over this side now. Some detail. Okay. The beauty of this water is I, I've still got room to do uh, um, more to the water because of the gaps that are in it. It's not a fluid uh, one piece uh, wash. So I'll just put a little bit more pinky. I'll add some rose. Could be just the fluke of the printer, but it looks like there's some pink in that water. Mm, coming from the brown. And I always love an opportunity to add colour, even if it's not logical. If I can see a hint of colour, I'll, I'll, I'll exaggerate it. That brown in there too. Quite strong. Oops, it's going to fall. Okay. Is that going down there? I've got to take it back. Take it back. Somehow you've got to fudge it so it makes it look like you meant it. Overpowered with the, I overdid the water part of it. Hmm. Oh, I see that's the reflection down from there. There's quite a reflection at the back here, too. So, some browns in the water. Okay, that will do me for the, for the moment and I'm going to come back and add some details that I'm hoping will brighten the, uh, the overall image. First thing I have to do is dry that off now. I'm enough, I've done enough of blending, of blending painting and now I need to sharpen up some edges. So you start by drying the paper. I kind of think I still need to go darker over there. I think I've got to bite the bullet and just darken that. Yeah, that seems to work. Go right across some of these. I'll get back to the rigger. I was on the middle, in the middle of the rigger before enjoying its versatility, ability to uh, define some edges. Hmm. That building there has lost its, uh, it's behind trees on my photograph, so I don't really know what I've got there, so I'll just put that down into the water. Yeah, it is. Interestingly enough, this is this should be a quite dark reflection there, so I'll just grab something and pull that down. It's supposed to be a reflection of that. Same on this side. 
and same on this side. to think I should stop soon and uh, I just I'm going to have some fun with a little bit of gouache in this one as usual and that will mean putting in some birds because there's birds all over the place and uh, possibly adding a little bit uh, I could oh I know what I'll do I'll grey this out a little bit and I could just do a little bit of detail behind here which I am loving doing And almost becomes a sketch when you start using your pencil like this or your brush in a kind of a stick way and you're making marks it's it, it can become a drawing and I love it it's a nice way to finish off a watercolor this is where your own personality can be added to the painting because everyone's got like a signature everyone's got their own method of drawing with a brush you will find your technique will be different to everybody else's like a tree i think there is a couple of little bits off the bridge like lights there are also the lights well, probably lights all the way along so i'm just going to do some verticals random Leave it at that and come back with a bit of white. Okay, the best way to use white is, in my opinion, straight from the tube. So it's always the right wetness, it's, you get used to it. I just need to look closely at these little swans. Yeah, so don't go to too much trouble with your birds. Actually, there's something I wanted to do before. I noticed when I was drawing off that I haven't really defined, compared to the actual um, photograph, I do need to define a tiny bit better. Oh, this is going to be a challenge, mixing the right colour. Let's see what I've got here. It might work. It's sort of a green colour. But then it might be because it's reflecting the trees. I'll just see what it looks like over here. I think I need to go a touch pinker with it. I don't know if you can see me mixing that or not. Because it's water, it's always got to have, in this case, it's not still water, so it's got to have a little zigzag edge on it. down the middle. I think I might just for the fun of it. This is totally random and it could totally ruin everything but I'm just going to put some blue in there. Darken that off towards the front. I might even get my beautiful strong teal. Yeah. Okay. Just got to remember there that I actually went in and um, wet that again. So if I go adding a bird in that position, just where my brush is at the moment, it'll run. So I've got to make sure it's nice and dry. So that means back to the hairdryer. And I stop fiddling. Okay, where was I? Before my mind wandered. Okay. Size is important here. You don't want to get them too big. So I tend to put in the body first and then just an uptick for the head. 
not even very you don't in fact I don't put the head in at all I just put the body and the neck there's one just out there later on I shall look at my particular I think I've painted this before because I've got daubs of white paint on it from other times I'll just make sure I'm doing, using the right reference couple under here a bit bigger towards the front you don't want to make it even you've got to have it asymmetrical so I've got three three there three there I better add a fourth one somewhere where will I, oh, I might uh, no I don't want to put one under each I'll put one out in the open in the white okay so now I've got white on my brush I can't help but do a little bit of a scribble on these buildings behind to catch for the light catching on the right hand side the sky reflecting in those windows faked a little bit of detail on this side not much once again it's you just want to keep it quite casual that side now I'm just going to put a light on the sides of the statues Probably it. Across the back. Dry the dry technique of scrubbing it with a fast brush. Now these trees I don't think I need to put much in there. I'll put a few dots just to thin it out to make it look like you can see the sky behind, but I've got to be careful about that because I have made a dark sky. And I think I, that's about it. So the next thing I'll just finish off these birds with by putting their necks in. Next necks and then I'll stand back and decide if heads go in but usually the heads are so tiny that it's best not to bother with them just thickening at the top and sometimes they have a reflection going down which is just a dotted line I'll see if you can see that closely little dot 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 underneath these birds smaller at the back bigger at the front these ones are fairly I'll pretend they're closer I'll just put a little SP on this because I do like to sign everything not as one does sometimes when I make these sketches I, I forget to and I have to go back later but a certain thing about doing it while it's fresh and while while you've got your paint on in the tree. So that's it. very much for watching Oops. I've, I've enjoyed this painting and um, I hope you guys can do it and if, if you download the, the, the photograph and have a go that'll be fun and uh, um, maybe you could tag me put up on your, your Instagram page and tag my name that way um, I could see what you're doing <laughs> that'll be fun anyway thanks a lot see you next time bye bye